This is a project SWEQUEST, Swedish Question Generation for Assessing Reading Comprehension. This is Johan Boye speaking. I'm a researcher at KIDH and I'm doing this project together with Maria Rudell at Stockholm University. The goal of this project is to create a system that can generate reading comprehension questions from a given text. So here's a teacher. He has selected a text that he wants his students to read and then he wants to check whether or not his students have understood what they have read. So he presses the button and the system generates a number of multiple choice questions in this form. So here's the text is about Stockholm and here's the question, what makes Stockholm one of the world's cleanest cities? And here are a number of alternatives. So one of these is the correct alternatives and the other are distractors, which means that they are incorrect but still plausible alternatives. So this is what the project is about then. We intend to implement a demo system that can generate these kind of reading comprehension questions in the form of multiple choice questions or MCQs. And although the example I just showed you was in English, we intend to do this for Swedish texts. And we're going to use the latest advances in artificial intelligence and neural networks to do so. And we also want to evaluate the system uh, with the help of teachers in SFI, which is Swedish for immigrants. So we want to generate questions with the help of the system and the teachers going to decide whether or not these questions are good and useful. So why is this important? Well, we live in a text-based society with high demands of literacy in the society at large and in the labor market in particular. And just to provide you some background, 20% of the Swedish population is born outside Sweden. One million people immigrated to Sweden between the years 2013 and 2020. This has led to a significant rise of the number of students in SFI. The students in SFI constitute a very heterogeneous student group when it comes to their linguistic, cultural and educational background. And SFI has been criticized for not sufficiently adapting the teaching to the students' individual levels and needs. So we believe that the methods developed in this project could provide a flexible tool for teachers to assess the students' reading comprehension and to adapt the content to the students' needs. There are a number of pedagogical challenges associated with this project. Assessing uh, reading uh, is considered difficult. Uh, reading is uh, to a large extent an invisible process and it's also uh, a very complex process. Uh, multiple choice questions is a commonly used uh, test format and uh, it's associated with both, both advantages and disadvantages. So some advantages are that it's a format that is recognized by most students. Uh, it doesn't require the student to express the answer herself, which is important because as a teacher, you would sometimes want to discern the student's reading comprehension and not let the assessment uh, be influenced by the student's uh, writing or speaking abilities. And this is important because most learners comprehend more than they can express. And it's also a format that is suitable for automated scoring. However, there are also some disadvantages associated with multiple choice questions. It is more difficult to target complex reading processes, such as when the student should interpret or reflect upon the reading. There are also uh, a number of challenges associated with the difficulty of discerning the student's reading comprehension and nothing else. Uh, the student can always guess and you would want to avoid a situation where one alternative is obviously incorrect. And depending on the topic of a given text, the student's prior knowledge can influence how they answer. And you would want to avoid a situation where the student can answer the question without reading the text. So in order to generate these multiple choice questions automatically, we have been using a data-driven approach, which means that we are generalizing from examples. And these examples are texts from former SFI tests with the accompanying questions and answer alternatives. So the input when we generate this question then is a text 
and the output is a question with its correct answer and a set of distractors. And in this project, we've tried a multitude of models. We also tried non-neural models, one based on rule induction. Uh, we have also fine-tuned the Swedish BERT model, KB BERT, and used on these uh, SFI tests and used various different sampling techniques. We also trade a whole new generative model for Swedish called SWE control. And additionally, we have tried uh, the two models from OpenAI, GPT-3 and ChatGPT, using a zero-shot approach. So here's a breakdown of some of the results. And I should emphasize again that we are doing this for Swedish. So although ChatGPT and GPT-3 are mainly English models, and only 0.1% of the training material consists of Swedish data, they are still capable of understanding a Swedish prompt and generate Swedish output. And you can see here that ChatGPT uh, by far was the most successful model here. So green means that there were essentially no problems, where the other colors uh, means that there are various kinds of problems. So the BERT models in particular, they had problems with generating questions that were actually not answerable from the text. So the thing that was asked about was not discussed in the text. And there were also ki various kinds of grammatical problems to some extent. Uh, the only problem with ChatGPT and GPT-3 is that they didn't actually generate as many questions as they were asked to do. So let's have a look at a couple of examples to see what can go wrong. So again, I want to remind you that these were Swedish questions generated from Swedish texts, but we have translated them here in for your convenience. So here's one text. Uh, I'm so annoyed with people that keep smoking everywhere. Today a guy was smoking just in front of me in the bus queue. Couldn't he have just stepped away a few meters and smoked somewhere else? Smokers are such egoists. Lisa. I can just agree with you, Lisa. People should show more respect to each other. Sissy. Lisa, couldn't you just go somewhere else if smoke is bothering you so much? Stop whining, Ellen. Just let people do what they like. Jemina. Which person in the text has the most condemning attitudes towards smokers was the generated questions with the alternatives Lisa, Sissy, Ellen and Jemina. And you might want to pause the video here and think about what answer you would suggest. Uh, but we tag this as a bad question because essentially both A and B are correct. So it has more than one correct answer. And here's another example. Uh, the same text again, but the question generated this time is which statement is correct? And here the model has completely misunderstood the text uh, and thinks it talks about factual statements, uh, whereas it actually talks about opinions of various people. So we tag this as a bad question as well. So here's an example we were initially very enthusiastic about. Uh, so the text is a letter from a client to her telecom provider and it reads, Hello, my cell phone seems to finally work again after having paid the late payment reminder fee, but I'm angry that I also needed to pay an extra 160 kroner as a starter fee. I just wanted you to know that. Regards, Evalena. And the question is very nice because it asks about why did Evalena write this letter? So it asks about the purpose uh, of Evalena to write this letter rather than something which is stated explicitly in the text. So these kind of questions are very interesting. Uh, and also the alternatives has a very nice parallel grammatical structure. Everything starts with to say here and D is the intended correct answer to say that she had paid too much. So all of these uh, alternatives are actually plausible, but this is a correct answer. But when you scrutinize this, it's actually not really correct to say that she had paid too much. It's rather that she thought she had paid too much. And you might think this is a small detail, but actually these are the kind of nuances you really want to teach students in the SFI program. So even though this uh, question looks very nice on the surface, there are still some remaining problems with it. In order to explore the pedagogical potentials uh, of generated MCQs, we conducted a small-scale evaluation study consisting of um, a questionnaire with four texts from former national tests and ten automatically generated MCQs, uh, where we asked teachers to assess the relevance and difficulty of the questions and the credibility of the distractors and areas of improvement. 
We also conducted uh, interviews with six teachers where we discussed experiences of assessing reading and using multiple choice questions. Uh, we also asked them to expand on their uh, answers in the questionnaire. And we also discussed impressions of possibilities and challenges with automatically generated MCQs. Some of the overall impressions that came out of the interviews were that the questions were considered relevant but deemed too easy in the sense that they mostly targeted explicit information uh, in the text and they were also characterized by lexical overlap, that is, identical formulations in the text and in the MCQ. And this is a problem because uh, understanding implicit information and making inferences is a central aspect of reading comprehension. And the teachers uh, asked for more questions targeting these reading processes. Another identified problem was that questions and alternatives was, was not always aligned with the text. One example could be that there were several answers that could be correct or that the question was impossible to answer. Another aspect that came out of the interviews were that the MCQs were mostly associated with summative assessment, but they could also be used to discuss reading strategies and why the alternatives are right or wrong. And as one teacher stated, then it becomes a learning situation. The teachers also pointed to several possibilities with the technology. Um, a system like the one we're exploring here could be an easy way to create a large question bank. It could possibly be time saving depending on how much the teachers need to adjust the questions. The system could provide MCQs one hasn't thought of oneself, thereby adding a second perspective or a new perspective on questions that are possible to ask on a text. The teachers also thought it would be nice to be able to choose level of difficulty and targeted reading process when generating questions. All the interviewed teachers were interested in trying the system to generate questions themselves. However, uh, they all emphasized that the generated MCQs shouldn't be used in an unreflected way. Teachers need to evaluate the questions from a pedagogical perspective. And in order to do so, it's important to have knowledge of test construction and experience of the target group. And to conclude, a human touch is needed in test construction, as stated by one of the teachers, especially when assessing communicative language ability. On the technological side, what we'll do for the remainder of the project is that we will try to improve the generation of distractors by uh, reinforcement learning with human feedback. So we're going to train a reward model by showing people generated MCQs where they can upvote good distractors and downvote bad distractors and by using this feedback to train a reward model. And finally, fine-tuning the language model with this reward model. Please don't hesitate to get in touch with us if you want to know more about the project and you can find all contact details here on this final slide.